The very first thing that needs to be done in KSP2 is to get your science from the launch pad. Now that we scooped up that air, we can get moving on our tech tree. Unlocking a couple of things, then moving straight into getting the very first objective. Welcome to this video on Kerbal Space Program 2's new science exploration mode. In this series, I'm going to go from the very beginning to the very end. Hopefully, I haven't beat the game yet, but I'm pretty close. I'm sure we'll get there. In this very first mission, all we have to do is go up 10 kilometers. This should be pretty easy. I'm flipping over to the side here to make sure that we don't go straight up and then straight back down, because that can be pretty dangerous. And there it is, 10 kilometers. We can switch back over to mission control and finish up that quest. Now that we have that done, we need to get up to 70 kilometers. I actually go back to the ship and do a little propulsive landing just for style points. So here we are, let's go up to above 70 kilometers. To do that, we're gonna have to slap a ship together. Slap, slap, slap. Pretty simple stuff here. I think that's just a swivel engine on the bottom. I think it's actually a swivel engine on the top stage as well because that's all we have access to. Not ideal, but it does let us kind of drop off some excess weight here as we get up here a little bit. We're up to 15 kilometers here, turning over onto the side and going on to stage two, which again, is just a smaller swivel engine. And there it is, mission complete. Moving back to the mission control, we can accept that. Complete it. And now we need to land in a body of water, which is perfect because we're on our way back down, which is why it's really great to actually go back to mission control while you're still in flight, if possible, because there's another mission completed. Let's submit that as well. So now we're focused on orbiting Kerbin. Let's unlock as much stuff as possible. We got the Terrier engine, pretty important stuff. And we also spring for the Mun landing suite because that's going to be pretty important pretty soon here. Slapping together a very similar ship to the last one, except for that this one has Terrier engines on the top stage and a bunch of okay. SRB boosters on the bottom. You can see we are flying. I mean, we're always flying, but now we're going quickly as well. Up here, we'll do a quick little orbital maneuver. And uh, using our second stage with lots of Delta V, it's very easy to get ourselves into orbit and Kerbin, and here it is as we circularize, that's a big word, circularize. There's our mission complete. Hopping back to mission control, we can submit that, and we get 75 more science bucks. Next up, we need to do a couple of things. EVA well in Kerbin orbit's a nice easy one. Done and done. <laughs> and for style, let's do a little spin again. Flipping over, getting ready to come back in, and we land in a new biome, so might as well hop out and just get a little bit of science. We'll probably end up scooping up a little bit of dirt here. Then it's time to get back in and head back to the Kerbal Space Center, where we can take a look and see that we now need to get around the Mun. Just any kind of orbit will do, essentially, so we just need something powerful enough to make it to the Mun and create an orbit. I threw a few solar panels on here just to make sure that we do keep our charge through the flight, throw a communication on, a bit of an antenna, not super necessary, but yeah, I'd like to be able to call home if necessary, put some bigger SRBs on this, and it looks like we have just over 5,000 meters per second of Delta V in total, which will hopefully be enough. Now this is the largest craft that we've launched so far, but still very small in comparison to some other crafts we're going to be launching in the near future. There goes the SRBs turning over onto the side, giving ourselves a nice horizontal position to establish our orbit of Kerbin, create a maneuver node, and aim for the Mun. And there it is, almost. You just got to find an encounter here, so I'm just going to pull that prograde vector a little bit more, and there it is. So now that we have it planned out, we just need to hop in here. There it is, finishing up. And we have a very nice encounter with the Mun. Here we are again, posing for the camera. I 
going up. And as we just hit a little bit of a retrograde burn, we're going to be pulling that orbit in, and there it is. We now have an orbit of the Mun, which means we can head back over to Mission Control and finish up that mission. There it is. 150 science bucks. Next one is land on the surface of the Mun. They just keep getting harder. <laughs> also, we need to plant a flag on any mare, and we need to get a perfect orbit as well of Kerbin with 99 to 100 kilometers, so a very circular orbit. Just going to go ahead and degrade this current orbit to make sure that we come back in for an aero capture on Kerbin. These are the new reheating effects. A lot of people are saying they're pretty scuffed, and I can't disagree with that. They don't look the best. So landing here, doing a little hop. Might as well scoop up a little bit more dirt. It's always a good idea, and I love this new little animation. It's just, it's fun. So we're going to unlock a few more things here. Got a bunch of signs from that little Mun flyby, and here we are moving into the second tier of science as well. So I probably want to grab a couple things here and then move into creating our lunar lander. Sorry, our moonar lander. And uh, I throw on the science junior junior. So it's nice and compact and just kind of tuck it in a little bit there. I like it to have a nice form factor. Some ladders there. Of course, we've got our landing legs, everything else. Now we move on to our command module. This is a bit of an Apollo style. Uh, you know, I everybody says that, but it doesn't always mean it's like really like the Apollo, but you know, but it's close enough. If you have a, if you have a transit stage and you have a lander and they're going to meet back up and do a rendezvous and all that jazz, then eh, close enough. This time, I'm not even going for docking bays or anything like that. I'm just going to EVA and fly them over with their jetpack. It's a little bit easier and quicker that way. Bunch of SRBs going on here. And because we have so many SRBs, I decided to throw on some little Sepatrons as well. But looking at our nav ball, something is terribly wrong. It looks like our... Well, as soon as we actually start flying here, we get a little wobbly. And that is going to end up being a rapid unplanned disassembly as we tumble through the sky and eventually everything just starts exploding. But I'm not giving up yet. We're going to hit our retrograde. We're going to stop this thing and we're going to we're going to uh, pop the shoots, pop the shoots, do something. I don't know. Come on. And uh yeah. <laughs> That's, that's, that's what happened. But I also noticed that we were looking at the ground at the beginning of the flight. So there's a few different things that need to get fixed. And so I hop back into the VAB. I strut the hell out of those SRBs. And then I throw everybody into the gumball. So we're actually looking at the sky. And between those two different things being done, we have a much cleaner ascent. We do have something overheating in the fairing. Okay. There's some weird stuff going on with the overheating effects, and I hope they get fixed. I know there's some bugs there for sure. Let's get rid of these fairings. And once the fairings are deployed, we can continue on with our mission to the moon. We just need to extend out our orbit, find an encounter. Hey, look, I found one. And once we get over here, we go ahead and burn retrograde to pull in our orbit have a nice circular orbit of the Mun. We need that actually for our transit stage to be easy to meet back up with. I like to put the transit stage really nice and low over the surface so that our lander doesn't have as much work to do. I think that's a good plan. It, it seems to go pretty well for me. I wonder how high the actual Apollo missions stayed above the surface. I'm sure you don't want to be too close, especially with perturbations of the, of the gravity due to, you know, different surface... Uh, features. Anyways, here we are flying around, trying to get to the other side of the lander because I didn't line them up nicely. If you if you can, it's nice to put the doors on the same side so you don't have to do stuff like this, but oh well. He gets over there, or she gets over there. They might, it might be Valentina, I'm not sure. We're going to decouple that, so now we have two guys chilling inside the transit stage, and we have Valentina Kerman herself piloting the Mooner lander to get down to the surface. Do you like saying moon or do you like saying mun? Let me know in the comments below. If you made it to this part of the video, like the video, because, uh, I mean, you're here, so you must like it, right? If you hate it, I don't know why you're still here. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a nice path here, and really what I want to do is I want to get that nice and low so I can hit one of those dark patches. You can see those are, uh, you know, those are actually the mare, I think. The mares? I don't, I don't know if it's plural or what, 
Um, but the mission says we need to get to a nice dark patch, so that's what I was trying to do here. Coming in for our landing, I'm just gonna hover a little bit, and... We have touched down. The eagle has landed. We can hop out. And the whole thing gets a little bit wobbly, but no big deal. Down to the surface and plant our flag right about there. Back to mission control. We can go ahead and finish up that mission. Submit that. And thank you for the science. Submit this one as well, which was planting a flag on a mare. And finish this one as well, which was have uh, a orbit around Kerbin. I, I don't know. It was it was something else. We, we did like three things. It was good. Now we need to go to the mysterious signal on the Mun. But this little lander only has 700 meters per second of delta V left, which at its current position was not going to be enough to make it over to the monument. So I had a big question to answer, which was whether or not I wanted to bring this whole mission back and then send up probably the exact same configuration, like don't need to change anything, just launch another vehicle exactly like this and go back to the monument, which monument, excuse me, which would have probably been the right call. But before I make any of these decisions, I do need to just successfully rendezvous the two crafts, which turned out to be not too difficult. You can see here it's just coming in nicely, 600 meters away. And before long, we're getting a nice encounter. I can just let it get nice and close here and give it a little burst until we have no relative velocity. Do a couple of flips for style and then turn your jetpack on, Val. Let's go up into the transit stage. She goes. Yeah, it's a bit of a trek. Gotta wait a sec. Okay, so as she arrives, she's got to look for the correct side with the door, which is always a little tricky, but there it is. Let's go down and into the door, grab onto the ladder, and Valentina makes her way inside with her two friends. And they look and they notice that they have 2,700 meters per second of Delta V, and that is a gift we just can't overlook as I aim myself towards the monument. Now, I don't have landing legs. This was never meant to land. But I do have a poodle engine, and a will, and a desire to make it to this monument, so burning retrograde, I make my way down to the surface. Still going a little bit too fast, I overshoot it, and then I shoot my way back over as a little boost back burn. And there it is, below me, we see a beautiful Munner Mooner Arch. This is sped up a little bit, I didn't go that crazy. So we're going to come down here for a very, very soft landing because we do not want to break these engines. So just coming down, I basically, I, I think I could have landed on a baby duckling and it would have survived. I don't know. I, I, that's the weirdest thing I could have said, but it was a very, very soft landing to protect those poodle engine bells. So again, Valentina, I believe, is making her way up to the Mooner Arch, and it is a beautiful vista. I honestly don't think I could have got luckier with when the sun came out there. It was like literally behind the sun part of the panel. Like I did not plan that, but it's incredible that that happened. A little further. So you can see each one of the planets and their moons represented on the arch. It's it's really quite beautiful in its own way. It's a really incredible monument, and so, like the, the size of these are amazing. So here we are up on the side of the Mooner Arch, and of course we gotta climb to the tippy top. But before long, since we've got our mission complete, we did find the monument, it's time to go. So fly on back to the, you know, what now is the lander, let's call it the lander, call it what it is, right? And uh, with a, a little bit of overshooting, we do end up finding the ladder and climbing on back in. And back to mission control, let's go ahead and check our mission, submit this for 350 science, we get the mysterious signal on the MUN is complete. And it is time to leave.
I said it's time to leave. Let's go. <laughs> so we make it back and we land above what I can only guess is like the Sahara Desert. It's just dunes and dunes every direction. It's like Tatooine or something. And here we are, we've landed, and I can finally collect my last bits of science and get ready for the next mission where I'm sure I'll be going to Minmus and beyond. If you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more like this, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.